Now moving on to point lead from the month of October. Now Asia Pacific Institute of Broadcasting Development it was established in 1977 under the auspices of UNESCO. Now it is a regional intergovernmental organization servicing countries of United Nations Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific. That is UNSCAP in field of electronic media development. Its mandate is to achieve a vibrant and cohesive electronic media environment in the Asia Pacific region through policy and resource development. Now AIBD currently has 26 countries as full members represented by 43 organizations 52 affiliate members its secretariat is in Kuala Lumpur Malaysia Now moving on to Asian oil Asian palm oil alliance edible oil trade associations from five palm oil importing countries in South Asia that is India Pakistan Sri Lanka Bangladesh and Nepal have announced the setting up of Asian palm oil alliance its aim is to safeguard the economic and business interest of palm oil consuming countries and will work towards increasing the consumption of palm oil in member countries it will try to ensure that palm oil is recognized as high quality and healthy vegetable oil and change its negative image asia accounts for around 40% of the global palm oil consumption indonesia and malaysia are the biggest palm oil exporters in the world now india is the largest importer of palm oil in asia accounting for 15% of global imports now india's annual import of edible oil are around 13 to 14 million tons now moving on to saptakoshi high dam now saptakoshi high dam is a multi purpose project proposed to be constructed on the saptakoshi river of nepal Now the project is primarily aimed at controlling the floods in south east nepal and north east bihar to generate hydro power the project will provide irrigation control floods and generate 3000 megawatts of electricity india and nepal have agreed to take forward the dam project towards through further studies now let's look at some of the tributaries of the koshi river they are tamor arun dud koshi likhu tama koshi suk koshi and triuga Raj Biraj and Bhitar Nagar are two important cities around this river system. Now moving on, the Mahakali Treaty. Now the Mahakali Treaty was signed in 1996 over the integrated development of Mahakali River, including Sharda Baraj, Tanakpur Baraj, and Pancheshwar Bar project. Now Mahakali River is also known as Sharda River or Kali River in Uttarakhand. It joins Ghaghra River in Uttar Pradesh, which is a tributary of Ganga. Now moving on to Jait Manisar anti-terror. Manisar 2022. Now, Jade is an annual counter-terrorist exercise held within the framework of SCO Rats. The National Security Guard (NSG) hosted the Jade Manisar Anti-Terror 2022. This is a, this is stage two of the exercise. Now, stage one of the exercise was conducted in July August 2022 by National Counter-Terrorist Force of SCO member countries in their respective territories. Now, moving on to Tri-Service Missile Command, the government is considering setting up a Tri-Service Missile Rocket Command on lines of Space and Cyber Command as the first steps towards Military Theater Command. The proposed missile command will be responsible for deployment of missiles and rocket regiments against any hostile adversary. Example: conventional missiles like Brahmos and Akash, as well as Pinaka rockets, will be placed under one command for rapid deployment against any adversary. It will be headed by a commander of the three services in rotation. Now, moving on to light combat helicopter that is present. The indigenous light combat helicopter present has been formally inducted into the Indian Air Force. The LCH is the first indigenous multi-role combat helicopter. The LCH has been des designed as a twin-engine dedicated combat helicopter of 5.8 ton class, thus categorized as light. It has a maximum speed of 268 kilometers per hour and a range of 550 kilometers, and the maximum density altitude of 6.5 kilometers. It has been designed and developed by HAL. India has been operating French origin legacy helicopters Chetak and Chita made in India by HAL. These single engine machines are primarily used for utility helicopters. Indian Air Force also operates the Lancer, an armed version of Chita. Now the IAF currently operates the Russian origin MI-17 and its variants. These are to be phased out starting in 2028. Moving on to sounding rockets. Now sounding rockets are usually one or two stage solid propellant rockets. They are primarily intended for probing the upper atmospheric regions using rocket borne instrumentation. They also serve as platforms for testing prototypes of new components or subsystems intended for use in launch vehicles and satellites. Now moving on to RH200. RH200 is part of the Rohini sounding rocket family used by ISRO for atmospheric studies. It has completed 198 consecutive successful flights so far. It is a two-stage rocket capable of climbing up to a height of 70 kilometers bearing scientific payloads. The first and second stage of RH200 are powered by solid motor. The 200 in the name denotes the diameter of the rocket in millimeters. Moving on to Zhurong rover, it is China's first Mars rover mission. The rover went aboard the Tiananmen One space probe. It was launched in the Mars orbit mission in 2021. It has been it has na been named after the traditional fire god. It carries multi-spectral camera instruments to analyze the compositions of the rocks. It will also investigate subsurface characteristics with ground penetrating radar. It landed on a site located in Utopia, Planitia. It is largest recognized impact basin on Mars.
Now China became the third country after former Soviet Union and United States to put a robot rover on Mars. It has found evidence of major floods that took place billions of years ago. Now moving on to Biomitra, it is a female robot astronaut unveiled in 2020. Biomitra is a half humanoid lacking lower limbs. It has been designed to resemble a human with facial expressions and speech and sight capabilities. It is undergoing pre-flight ground tests at ISRO Inertial System Unit. The humanoid will fly aboard unmanned test missions ahead of Gaganyaan's human space flight mission. The ISRO's Inertial System Unit was responsible for the design, development and integration of the robot. The Vikram Sarabhai Space Center at Dumba developed its fingers. The AI-enabled robot is designed to fly aboard a ro rocket with standing vibrations and shocks during the flight. Now moving on to Super App, the concept of everything app or Super App is popular in Asia and 10 companies across the world have tried to replicate it. A Super App offers a suite of services for users such as messaging, social networking, peer-to-peer -peer payments and e-commerce shopping. Some examples include WeChat of China, can be used for hailing taxi, sending money or making payment at stores, use it as an electronic identification system, etc. And Grab App of Southeast Asia offers food delivery, ride hailing and demand package delivery and financial services and investing. Now Super Apps are Apps have concerns like increase in possibility of a monopoly, privacy concerns like sharing of data with third-party services service providers. Now moving on to programming language for crypto economy, C++. It is a programming language associated with Bitcoin. It is termed as an accessible programming language that users of Java, C and C Sharp can easily learn due to existing similarities. It is one of the most used programming language with wide application in operating systems like Mac OS, Windows, gaming devices, search engines and machine learning. Solidity. It is a programming language used on blockchain platform Ethereum. It is also known as curly bracket language. Part of Ethereum ecosystem also support other programming languages such as Python, Ruby, Rust, Java and more. Now Rust has the distinction of being called the perfect programming language in 2021 by Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey. Now blockchains such as Solana blockchain, the Polkadot blockchain uses Rust. However, developers say that Rust is too difficult to learn. Moving on, Haskell. Cardano smart contract programming language is based on Haskell. It is well suited to deliver accurate crypto projects due to its immutability feature. Moving on to advanced Dora technique, it is widely used system to estimate tropical cyclone intensity. Now this technique utilizes the available satellite images from polar orbiting satellites to examine the features of developing tropical storms that is hurricane cyclones, typhoons, etc. It uses images in the visible spectrum, daytime and infrared images in the nighttime. This technique cannot help make any predictions or measure wind or pressure or any other meteorological parameters associated with the cyclone. But it is a guide to estimate the storm's intensity and possible intensification. This technique is said to be one of the greatest meteorological innovations. It has been named after US meteorologist Veron Dovrock. Now moving on to Sova Trojan. It is a mobile banking vi Trojan virus. Now Sova malware hides itself within fake Android applications that show up with logo of legitimate apps like Chrome. Amazon NFT platforms to deceive users into inst install installing them. Once installed, it sends a list of applications installed on the device to C2, that is command and control server, controlled by the threat actor in order to obtain the list of targeted applications. Now, Sova can collect keystrokes, steal cookies, intercept multi-factor authentication tokens, take screenshots, record videos from webcam, and can perform gestures like screen click, swipe using the Android accessibility service. It has the capability to encrypt all data on Android phone and hold it to ransom. Moving on, Trojan is a file program or piece of code that appears to be legitimate and safe but is actually a malware. Now, malware is a software intentionally designed to cause disruption to gain unauthorized access to information or system. Now, moving on to nanoplastics. Nanoplastics are tiny plastic debris particles smaller than 1000 nanometers. Now, 1 nanometer is equals to 1 billionth of a meter. Now, researchers from the University of Eastern Finland have found that nanoplastics can travel up the human food web through plants, insects and fish. This is possible due to their small size. Nanoplastics can lightly pass through physiological barriers and enter organisms. Moving on to the Jaldut app, it has been developed by the Ministry of Rural Development and Ministry of Panchayati Raj. Its aim is to monitor the underground water levels across the country. The app will be used to capture water levels of selected 2-3 wells in every village measured twice a year. To ensure transparency, the officers have to upload the geotagged photographs through the app. Now the regular data to be input by Jaldut would be integrated with the database of National Water Information Informatics Center, which can be utilized for analysis and help in conservation efforts. Now Mudhera has a 24x7 solar powered village. Now the government has declared Mudhera in Gujarat's Mahinsa district as India's first 24x7 solar powered village. It will be India's first village to become a net renewable energy generator. 
It will also have a solar based ultra modern electric vehicle charging station. In the daytime, solar panels will provide power to the Vigil Village. In the evening, BES, India's first grid connected megawatt hour scale battery energy storage system, will provide power to the houses. Now, people will be able to save 60% to 100% on electric bill. Moving on to Ranipur Wildlife Sanctuary as Tiger Reserve. Now, Uttar Pradesh has approved the notification of state's fourth Tiger Reserve, other than Dudwa, Filbit, and Amangar, that is, Buffer of Corbett Tiger Reserve, in Ranipur Wildlife Sanctuary in Chitrakoot district. It will be 54th Tiger Reserve in India. Now, RWS was founded in 1977. It has no tigers of its own. Tigers from nearby Panna, that is MP, frequently visit it. According to National Tiger Conservation Authority, RWS is an important corridor for movement of tigers. It has tropical dry deciduous forest and is home to fauna such as le tigers, leopards, sloth bears, spotted deers, sambars, chinkara, and a number of birds and reptiles. Now let's just quickly look through the national parks in Uttar Pradesh. We have Kaimur National Park, we have Ranipur National Park, we have Kethel Ghat National Park, we have Kishanpur, Dudua, and these are sanctuaries. So the national parks are basically Dudua. Now moving on to Mount Victoria Babax. Now bird count India has ranked Mount Victoria Babax as the 8th rarest bird species in India among 20 on their list. They belong to the family of singing birds and they are named after the highest mountain in Chin state of Myanmar, Mount Victoria. This species is restricted almost exclusively to the Arakan Mountains in Western Myanmar and they are also sometimes spotted in Mizoram. Now, Mount Victoria Babax bird was recently seen for the first time in 25 years in Pui National Park. Now, Pui National Park, that is Blue Mountain National Park, is located in Mizoram. It gets its name from the highest peak of Mizoram called Pui Peak. The peak is the highest point at 2157 meters of Mizo Hill or Losai Hills, which are part of Arakan mountain range along the India-Myanmar border. Now moving on to Nila Kurinji is a shrub found in Western Ghats covering the slopes of hills in Kerala, Karnataka and Tamil Nadu. It blooms one every 12 years. Besides the Western Ghat, Nila Kurinji is also seen in the Chevroy, Chevroy in Eastern Ghats, Sanduru Hills of Bellari district in Karnataka, Nilgiri Hills which literally means blue mountains got their name because of Nila Kurinji. The flower has no smell or medicinal value. Now moving on to Broadbilt Sandpiper. Broadbilt Sandpiper has been spotted for the first time in Nanjarayan Tank Bird Sanctuary in Tamil Nadu. It is a migratory bird species found in Northern Europe, particularly in Nordic countries such as Norway, Sweden, Finland and in Siberia. Now the bird spends its non-breeding seasons foraging on insects and crustaceans in the shallow waters and mud flats, mostly in the coastal belts of eastern part of Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia. Its IUCN status is least concern. Now moving on to Nanjrayan Tank Bird Sanctuary. Now Nanjrayan Tank is a biodiversity hotspot and has been recently been announced as the 17th bird sanctuary of Tamil Nadu. It is also known as Sarkar Peria Pallyam Reservoir and is located on the outskirts of Tirupur city near Kuli Payam, about 60 kilometers from Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. The tank was built by the then local king Nanjrayan as a source for irrigation. Now moving to whitefly, whitefly is a pest of cotton that lowers yield by feeding on the underside of the leaf and spreading disease like cotton leaf curl virus. It causes growth of black fungus on leaves impacting photosynthesis. Most of the whitefly species are native to Caribbean islands. In India, the first invasive whitefly was reported in Kerala in 1995. Whitefly species are expanding their host range species on which they feed on valuable plant species like coconut, banana, mango, spota, guava, guava, cashew, oil palm and important medicinal plants. This is due to their polyphagous nature that is the ability to feed on various kinds of food and prolific breeding that is to produce a large number of offsprings. Now moving on to Kadavur Slender Loris Sanctuary. The government of Tamil Nadu has notified the Kadavur Slender Loris Sanctuary. The sanctuary will cover 11,806 hectares in Karur and Dindukul districts. Now, Slender Loris is, is facing threat due to habitat loss, electrocution by live wires, illegal smuggling and road accidents. Now, Slender Loris is a small nocturnal mammal. They are arboreal as they spend most of their life on trees. Its IUCN status is endangered and it falls in the Apectix 2 of sites, Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act of India, 1972. Now, the species act as biological predators of pests in agricultural crops and benefits farmers. Now moving on to sloth bear, the first world sloth bear day was observed on October 12th to generate awareness and strengthen conservation efforts around sloth bear. It is endemic to Indian subcontinent. Now sloth bears are omnivorous and survive on termites, ants and fruits. 
IUCN status is vulnerable and they are classified under Appendix 1 of Sites and Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act of India, 1972. Around 90% of the species population is found in India. A small population of bear is also found in Nepal and Sri Lanka. Sloth bears are very fond of honey, hence their alternative name of honey bear. They do not hibernate. For a long time, sloth bears were exploited as dancing bears by nomadic Kalandar community members. They fresh face threats like habitat loss, human animal camp conflict and poaching. Now moving on to population of Asiatic lions. According to 2020 census, Gujarat has 674 Asiatic lions against 523 in 2015. Out of these, 104 live on the Saurashtra coast. These include 17 lions along the Bhavnagar coast, which have been developed as a satellite habitat for the gir lion. In 10 years, the coastal population has grown from 21 to 104, an increase of 395%. An internal count of the department shows that in 2022, the number would be close to 130. A study has revealed that Corsarian equistrifoila plant, that is, saru plant, was found in abundance in coastal area. These plants reduce the temperature by 3 and 4 degrees, making the place conducive for lions. Now moving on to Caracal, it is a medium-sized wild cat native to Africa, Middle East, Central Asia and South Asia including India. Now the population of this cat is declining in Asia, increasingly increasing in Africa. IUCN status is least concerned but critically endangered in India. It falls under Appendix 1 of the Asian population and Appendix 2 for other sites and Schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. In India, Karkal is called Sial Ghosh, a Persian name that translates as black ears. It is a primarily nocturnal animal. The Karkal is carnivorous. It typically preys on small mammals, birds and rodents. Large-scale hunting, illegal trading and loss of natural habitat are considered significant threat to the species. At present, its presence is restricted to Rajasthan, Kutch and parts of Madhya Pradesh. Moving on to Tamira SES project, it has been launched by district administration of Trinu Leveli in Tamil Nadu with Bengaluru based non profit Atri. It is aimed to restore the social ecological system of Thamira Barani Riverscape from heat headwaters to the estuary to enable conditions for native biodiversity to thrive and maintain and enhance multiple ecosystem services to local stakeholders. Now, moving on to Thamira Bari Rani River, Thamira Bari Thamira Barani is only perennial river in Tamil Nadu. It originates in Hotigai Hills of Western Ghats in Thiruneveli district. The river flows through Thiruneveli and then neighboring Thutkudi and ends in Gulf of Manar at Punyakail. The river supports wildlife such as Nilgiri Martin, Slender Loris, Lion Tail Macau, Wild Spotted Bush Frog, Galaxy Frog, Sri Lankan Atlas Moth, and Great Hornbill. The river also has historical values and mentioned extensively in Sangam era literature. The river is stressed because of release of industrial effluents, sewage and water hyacinthias. Now moving on to Vishnugar project, it is run of the river hydro hydroelectric project being constructed on Dholi Ganga in Chamoli district of Uttarakhand. It is being built by Terry Hydro Power Development Corporation, a partially state owned enterprise. The project has been funded by World Bank and was sanctioned in 2011. The, propo the project is proposed to be completed in June 2023. Residents are opposing this project on the grounds of ecological impact, forced resettlement, loss of livelihood, threat to local Lakshmi Narayan temple, deemed to be of historical and cultural importance, limited availability of water and inadequate compensation. Now moving on to Varanasi as SEO tourism and cultural capital. Now Varanasi has been nominated as the first ever SEO tourism and cultural capital during the period of 2022 and 2023. This will promote tourism and cultural humanitarian exchanges between India and SEO member countries. Now moving on to Mudera Sun Temple, it was made by King Bhim I of Chalukya dynasty in the early 11th century. It is made to honor the sun god in Mudera village of Mahisana district on banks of river Pushpavati. On every equinox, the first rays of the rising sun fall on the diamond placed on the head of the sun god. The Sabha Mandap stands on 52 pillars signifying 52 weeks in a year. Now there are carvings of the sun on wall to show its unity with air, water, earth and space. In 2014, Modera Sun Temple entered the list of UNESCO World Heritage Site. It enjoys the same significance as other two well-known sun temples in Kashmir, that is Martand Sun Temple and Odisha, that is Konark Sun Temple. Now moving on to Bhatu Kama Festival, the Ministry of Culture has organized the celebration of Bhatu Kama Festival at Kartavya Path, India Gate, New Delhi. It is the annual state festival of Telangana. 
Now, Bhatukama is celebrated by women folk, heralding the beauty of nature in vibrant colours of multitudinal flowers. The festival begins a week before the grand Sadula Bhatukama, the grand finale of Bhatukama festival, which falls two days before Dashera. During the nine-day festival, women and girls sing and dance around specifically arranged flowers called Bhatukama. At the end of the festival, they immerse these flowers in local ponds. Now, moving on to Nizam's ceremonial sword. The ceremonial sword is of Indo-Persian design and is shaped like a snake and has serrated edges and a Damascus pattern relating to the city of Damascus with gold etchings of elephant and tiger, dated circa 1350. Now, the sword was exhibited by Ashab Jah VI, Nizam of Hyderabad, at the 1903 Imperial Darbar to commemorate the coronation of King Edward VII as Emperor of India. The sword was later gifted by Maharaja to Sir Kishin Prashad, the Prime Minister of Hyderabad, to General Sir Archibald Hunter, Commander-in-Chief, Bombay Command, in 1905. The sword was then donated to Glasgow Life Museum Collections in UK in 1978. The sword will be returned to India soon. Now moving on to India Nutrition Rating. It rates the overall nutritional profile for packaged food. Food items are assigned a rating from half star, that is least healthy, to five star, that is healthiest. According to the latest guideline by FASAI, the rating shall be displaced close in proximity to the name or brand of the product on front of the pack. The foods are rated on the basis of contents of saturated fat, sugar, sodium, fruits and vegetables, nuts, legumes, millets, dietary fiber and protein per 100 grams of solid or 100 grams of liquid food. Foods such as milk and milk product, butter oil, ghee, vegetable oil and fat, fresh and frozen fruits and vegetables, fresh and frozen meat, egg, fish, flour, sweetness will not have to display the star rating. Now moving on to Telemanus, the Telemental Health Assistant Networking Across Tets, that is Telemanus initiative was launched on the occasion of World Health Day, that is October 10th. The program includes a network of 23 telemental health centers of excellence. Its aim is to provide free telemental health service all over the country round the clock, particularly catering to people in remote or underserved areas. It has been launched by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences is the nodal center. A toll-free 24x7 helpline has been set up, allowing callers to select the language of choice for availing service. The calls would be routed to telemanus cells in respective states and union territories. Now moving on to International Treaty on Plant Genetics Resource for Food and Agriculture. It is also known as Seed Treaty and was adopted by the 31st session of FAO in November 2001. The treaty is to establish a global system to provide farmers, plant breeders and scientists with access to plant genetic material. The treaty came into force in 2004 and has been ratified by 149 countries, including India. India hosted the ninth session of the governing body of International Treaty on Plant Genetics Resource for Food and Agriculture. Now moving on to India Hypertension Control Initiative. It was launched in 2017. It is a collaborative initiative of Ministry of Health, ICMR, state governments and WHO. It aims to achieve 25% relative reduction in blood pressure by 2025. The 2022 UN Interagency Task Force and WHO Special Program on Primary Healthcare Award was given to India for IHCI initiative. Now moving on to Ashwasan campaign. It was organized by Ministry of Tribal Affairs and Ministry of Health and Family Welfare under the Tribal TB initiative. Under the campaign, door-to-door -door screening for TB was undertaken in more than 68,000 villages. Based on this campaign, the government has now zeroed on in 75 tribal districts where three-pronged strategy will be implemented to make these districts TB-free. The three-pronged strategy is to generating demand for TB services through continued engagement with community influencers, improving the delivery of TB services by enhancing the TB testing and diagnosis infrastructure, decreasing the risk of transmission and decreasing the pool of infectious through active case-finding campaigns. Now moving on to community seed banks, it has been launched by Sastra Deemed University with support from Science and Heritage Research University, Program of Department of Science and Technology. Under the initiative, the lead farmer cultivates one to many traditional varieties on his farm, a part of which after harvesting is shared and distributed to other interested farmers in neighboring localities and districts with or without payment. This is an informal structure with voluntary participation. The purpose is to trace, collect, redeem, restore approximately 20 heritage rice varieties of Tamil Nadu that have been lost due to monocropping of hybrids. Now, Aliva program, it has been launched by District Administration of Nayagad in Odisha. The district has skewed gender ratio of 855. The program has been launched to curb child marriage. Now, Anganwadi workers will maintain a register or every adolescent girl in district and their information that is address, education status, family details, educational progress, skill training status, health issues, etc. To prevent any incident of child marriage. Now, moving on to 
Operation Make Chakra. It is a pan India drive against circulation and sharing of child sexual abuse material. The operation is being carried out following the inputs received from Interpol's Singapore Special Unit. Moving on to Operation Garuda. The CBI has launched a multi-phase Operation Garuda against illicit drug trafficking network. The operation has been initiated in close coordination with Interpol and Narcotics Control Bureau for combating the smuggling of illicit drugs and psychotropic substances with a special focus on Indian Ocean region. Now moving on to Parikh, that is performance assessment, review and analysis of knowledge for holistic development. Now the Union government is planning to set up a national regulator Parikh for achieving a benchmark framework to assess students at the secondary and higher secondary level. It will act as a constituent unit of NCERT. It will be tasked with holding periodic learning outcome tests like National Achievement Survey and State Achievement Surveys. Its objective is to bring uniformity across states and central boards, which currently flow follow different standards of evaluation, leading to wide disparities in scores. Its aim is to put an end to the emphasis on road learning as envisaged by NEP 2020. Now moving on to classification of small companies, small businesses are corporation partnerships or sole proprietorships which have fewer employees or less annual revenue than regular sized businesses or corporations. The government notifies rules and provisions regarding small companies under the Companies Act of 2013. The Ministry of Corporate Affairs has revised the rules to increase the threshold of small companies with paid up capital not exceeding 4 crore rupees and the turnover to not exceed rupees 40 crore. Now moving on to seed scheme, the Union Ministry of Social Justice and Empowerment has launched the scheme for economic empowerment of DNT, that is seed for welfare of denotified, nomadic and semi-nomadic communities. It aims to economically empower these communities. The scheme is valid for a period of five years starting financial year 2021-22 to 2025-26. The scheme is applicable to families having income less than INR 2.5 lakh per annum. The benefits include coaching for DNT, NT, SNT candidates to enable them to appear in competitive examinations, health insurance to these communities, financial assistance for construction of houses. Now moving on to special assistance to states for capital investment. The government of India has launched a special scheme for special assistance to states for capital investment for 2022-23. Financial assistance will be provided to state governments in the form of a 50-year interest-free loan for capital investment projects. The scheme has seven parts that includes PM Gati Shakti, Related Expenditure, PM Gram Sadak Yojana, Incentivization for Digitization, Capital Project for Optical Fiber Network and Urban Reforms, etc. Now moving on to Jivika program, it is an initiative of Bihar government for poverty alleviation, Bihar Rural Lively Project, Livelihood Project with assistance from World Bank. It aims to empower rural poor by creating self-managed communities community institutions and enhancing incomes through sustainable livelihoods. Under this program, a new initiative has been launched wherein seized bottles of liquor will be provided to Jivika women workers for making bangles. The women workers will be trained in bangle making in other states. One crore rupees has been allotted to set up glass making factory in Patna. Now moving on to the world's first CNG terminal in Bhavnagar. The Prime Minister has laid the foundation stone for the world's first CNG terminal at Bhavnagar in Gujarat. Now Bhavnagar port is a seaport in Saurashtra region of Gujarat. The port is in close vicinity to Dholera Special Investment Region and is expected to serve the industries that set up base in the region. Now, Bhavnagar CNG terminal will be developed through a public-private partnership. The project will have a cargo handling capacity of 1.5 million metric tons per annum. Now, moving on to PM Devni, Devni, the Union Cabinet has approved a scheme, Prime Minister's Development Initiative for Northeast Region, that is PM Divine for remaining four years of the 15th Finance Commission from 2022-23 to 2025-26. It is a central sector scheme with 100% central funding. It will be implemented by Ministry of Development of Northeast Region, that is DONER. Its objective is to fund infrastructure convergently in spirit of PM Gati Shakti and support social development projects based on the need of Northeast Region. The scheme will also enable livelihood activities for youth and women, fill the development gaps in various sectors.